we've integrated callbacks, we've played with validations, we've used scopes, built in custom algorithms into models, and also created plain old Ruby classes. I think you're ready to start seeing how all of this fits together. So over the course of the next few videos, I'm gonna be setting up a, another class and uh, we're gonna create a, a new model called task that is going to connect with project because every project should have tasks associated with it. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna start it in this video, but it's gonna take a few videos to uh, go all the way through. So I'm going to open up the console and run a generator. So I'm gonna say Rails G model. We're not creating a scaffold, we're only creating a model. So Rails G model task. This is gonna have a title of type string. It's going to have a description of type text and lastly it's going to have a project reference okay so this project reference is probably the most confusing one if you've never seen this before because technically it's not a, a a database type but i'm going to show you what it does uh, automatically here in a second so if you hit return it's going to create the model file and also if you go item by item, you'll see it creates a migration file, a model file, and then some tests. So I'm gonna double click on this, switch back here and go to this file. If you've never used Sublime Text before and you're following along in Sublime, uh, in order to get to files quickly, all you have to do is hit Command T and it'll bring up this window, which is lets you go to any file and it has some really nice autofill uh, things. So if I wanted to go to my new task model file, I can just start typing in task and you can see that it comes right here. Okay, anyway, we haven't run the migration yet, so I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. So this is a migration file. You can see it has our title, has our description. Now this is the one that looks a little different. T.references project. Okay, what this means is this is going to be what you may know if you come from other languages as a foreign key relationship. So we're setting up a reference to project we're sending a database index on it, and then we're saying this is the foreign key. So let's run this migration and see what that does for us. So rake db migrate. There you go, everything worked. And if we go look at our schema file, you can see we now have a new table in our database. It has a title, description, and you can see here, when we said references, it doesn't say references here. This automatically gets converted to an integer and it follows a convention of project underscore ID. And you may wonder why we didn't just type in project underscore ID, semicolon or colon, and then a integer data type. And the reason is because it does a lot of things for us by typing in references. As you can already see, it added this index for us right down here so it makes uh, lookups much faster and the other thing that it does if we open up task.rb you can see that it puts some code in here where it says belongs to project so this is saying that a task belongs to a project and next we're going to get into how we can handle the other side of that database relationship 